Guys, welcome to India today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with the energetic, quirky cast, partial cast, not the entire cast of Sas Bahu or Flamingo. I watched two episodes. No spoilers are being dropped in this conversation and chat. We'll try. Uh, but I have to say, it's been something that completely took me over in terms of every sense possible: Super. the visuals, the dialogues, the way everybody is walking, the look, the feel. Uh, felt like a parallel universe. It was trippy sometimes, but I loved. the journey that every character goes through i was invested into that that's awesome um Thank you. and i want to start with that conversation homi because for you uh, this sense of taking the viewer or sort of storytelling has been a part of just your ethos since the beginning you've just told stories through characters you've been sort of attached to all of them and you've let us be a part of that part of your creative mind how different was that when uh, when when you got in the creative process of writing this show or making this show uh given the fact that it's very hatke from what we would expect from a home the violence streak part of it i didn't really overthink it yeah it's i think I'm, i was i i wrote the story very long ago right of this and it just uh uh it was supposed to happen then covid happened then my producer i think after 2 years of <laughs> me acting like it's still going on and being living under a rock said boss <laughs> we need to make the show I'm like, oh, now do I have to re-dig up that whole thing? And I was like, but somewhere it's always been very strongly inside me, and I'm growing inside me, and I needed to get it out. Uh, the characters were fascinating. The writers have added a lot to it, also. Um, and it was also the excitement of making a, a web show. I've, I've, not, I've never done that before, so I really didn't know if I'd be able to. And everyone said you're crazy if you think you're going to direct all eight episodes. You go completely mad, and you'll drive the cast and crew mad. <laughs> which you which did I think anyway. I did anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, and then Dinesh Vijay, in fact, told me he said, "Don't even pretend." You know, there were many uh, directors I was going to actually call and say, "Hey, you want to co-direct this, or you want to do some episodes?" And he said, "Don't even go there, because you're not going to let it go. You're an anal Parsi ba <laughs> who is not going to let your material go with anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. So just suck it up and do it." But it happens. so easily and so organically it wasn't an effort in that sense it was right. a very uh, sort of uh, tiring shoot for us because we yeah. were in certain places which were quite harsh and uh, we were shooting a lot we were shooting way more than you'd shoot on a normal this thing a uh, feature but uh, i don't know it all happened so beautifully and so in, it just happened I, i i can't explain to you we we now sit back and say mm. how did that happen yeah. right. almost yeah. like that I remember being halfway through the shoot and posting something on Insta and saying, "Day forty, and I still can't see the horizon." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it didn't bother us. I mean, we were just we wanted it to just keep going on and on and on for some strange yeah. reason. You know, before you get into the show and before you start watching it, the first sense of the show comes through its title. That's I'm guessing whenever we hear something, our first sensory overload is that okay, this says this, so what it could be. Now, Sas Bahu. Or flamingo is quirky in its own sense. Um, I believe it was Sas Bahu or Cocaine is that the original title? And I believe guys, it was, yeah. I and did. that was a change that you made based on a creative. I, call. I, yeah, it's a creative call. I feel it. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it was also a very sort of uh, intelligent call because I feel that that sort of brackets in in a, it in a space which it's not. That's not what it's all about. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. also I feel it sort of restricts a lot of. Uh, websites and True. accessibility and it's it's so the idea was not to get go down that trail at all because it's not it, that's not what it's all about mm. yeah it there's much much more to the series than just this uh, cartel that's being run yeah. yeah and flamingo is the brand of the product that the uh, women make and uh, uh, distribute and um, thrive off in a strange way so right i think that is what uh, why it became flamingo and Now you're not know, coming to the cast because I just want to get a <coughs> sense of how was it like to sort of physically be in that place because the climate. I'm guessing you must have shot in some crazy locales. Perhaps I'm not aware of where exactly you shot, but from the look and feel, it looks very rustic. It does look like it's a parallel galaxy and universe. When she opens the door, when she walks in, you get to you get to you're introduced to a certain set of clan of people, almost like a tribe-like feel, right? What was the process of sort of getting into these characters? I want to start with you because. I'm guessing somebody comes to you with work and says this is the part you're going to play and this is the kind of work that you have to do what goes to your mind and then when you get to work with somebody like Homi knowing that he will definitely give you something that's quirky not turn off the mill stuff 
how excited were you and how did you uh, i think when a new role comes my first instinct is always to run out of bombay because i have to go somewhere to find characters and he obviously wrote material which was not very um it needed some thinking there you i couldn't have just gone and played bigly it was yeah. a bit uh, yeah i needed to spend some time so yeah my first thought is obvious to just run away i did go to a workshop i stayed in a place a fictitious similar place and prepped and stayed with a family and lived the way they live for some time that was my prep on the show wow yeah. and that sort of does come across in those scenes and i've been dying to work with him for 9 years so <laughs> yes i <laughs> So I put in everything that I had. But Homi, do you get that often? The fact that he's a recluse and he'll only do work when he when he gets that calling and he will he really needs to be pulled out and like he's you know come on you, do huh? stuff. I'm talking <laughs> about you. Yeah. Who's he? Yeah. No, I'm talking about you. Given the <laughs> fact that everybody says this, that at some point in time they do want to work with you. Given the fact that just I've heard that. I've heard that. Uh, no, I mean I've always made films whenever I wanted to make films. Mm. So it's not that I've done it out of a compulsion yeah. of. Uh, and i'm not someone who eats drinks sleeps films I right mean, i i enjoy storytelling but i've got the rest of my life to live so i need to jump off mountains i need to go in deep into the ocean i need to deep schedule uh, busy <laughs> play with the kids and babysit and either just everything yeah what life like is about life, yeah so that i i guess that's why i never used to do it with that kind of frequency i would do it whenever i wanted to and uh, fortunately i had the uh, luxury to do that uh because in a bizarre way i don't have uh too many major desire material desires yeah uh i like to have friends who have all the stuff so <laughs> i can pile on to them so we can yeah no but uh, yeah so i i did that but saying that i was just saying it earlier to them is that uh it was always a plan for me to uh make more films in the latter part of my life as uh, you know when people decide hey we're going to stop working i said that is the time i'm going to start making films more frequently because it's uh, not as taxing on the body as jumping off a mountain yeah <laughs> uh, so yeah i think you'll sadly or happily see more of me yeah. i happily. just uh, <laughs> finished a feature so film sad. back to back so i think my producer is also in shock that i've done two things immediately one after the other then i jump into a, another film which i'm producing at the by october november wow which is on siachen and then uh, yeah so this will keep going on yeah we'll keep meeting you hopefully yeah. Yeah. so radhika is there a sense of comfort um, or is this something new that you learn about a director once you've worked with him in the past is there a part of it's like perhaps peeling an onion you find a new layer uh, oh <laughs> he's also making me do this and that and yourself when you're performing Like how is he? Like tell me, does he like push you? Does he have a certain quirk? Because every director has one, right? Like to get the best out of you. I think you would expect uh, a director that that you've already worked with to be a uh, little lenient with you yeah. or uh, little sweet with you. In the second project, he was so I don't want to say. He challenged me every single day because he was so aware about. my my boundary or my limit he wanted to push that every single day he knew about my comfort zone so in the first project what you do is you try to you can impress the director with a few tricks that you have once your director is aware about your tricks you need to come up with something new or you need to like bring something you need to grow as a person 